Now we're going to work with the same data structure, but rather exporting it to a CSV based format. How is this format useful? Well, most analytical applications are able to support CSV formatted data, including Microsoft's Excel, OpenOffice.org's Calc, and other spreadsheet programs. So as a result, it's quite useful to know that your DBMS, MySQL, is able to write data directly to a text file rather than to a proprietary table data file. And as you know, all table data is stored beneath the default data, direct data directory, which happens to be var lib MySQL. And for the HR tables, the table data files are stored beneath the HR subdirectory. However, these are proprietary MyISAM files that are readable only by programs that understand the MyISAM format. There may be instances, however, where you want to have MySQL write to CSV for the sole purpose of reading that CSV, even live or hot, if you're only reading it, from a spreadsheet type application. So it's good to know that MySQL can perform this for you. It may even be a way for you to just simply perform a quick export of data that's in your DBMS to a CSV file so that you can process it directly. So there's certainly a need for it. But if you recall from our last section where we focus on memory-based tables, CSV isn't supported by default using the default MySQL server binaries. Let's reconfirm that by executing a show engines. And you'll see MyISAM and memory-based tables are supported. InnoDB tables are supported. Others are not supported, including CSV. So in order to provide support for CSV, we must download an additional package unless we're compiling MySQL from sources. So let's label this particular section CSV Storage Engine. And we'll say that it requires max RPM. This is really MySQL Max, which provides additional functionality such as the additional storage engines that we're interested in, including CSV, optionally the network database cluster, optionally Black Hole, Berkeley DB, and the example storage engines. All of these additional storage engines require, the ones that are listed as no for support, require the MySQL Max package. So we'll go ahead and download that package and you'll see that once MySQL is restarted that it provides support. Now by the way when you install the MySQL Max package it will restart your MySQL D instance. Let's just make a note of that. Note installation of MySQL Max RPM will restart MySQL. That's very important because you may have connected users. So let's keep that in mind before installation. You may want to do this off-peak or check your connections by executing a show process list and perhaps instruct users to log off. Here we have three processes, two for application and one for this existing terminal session. So without further ado, let's navigate over to dev.mysql.com forward slash downloads and we'll see where we're able to download the max base packages. If you click on any of the components that require Max, such as Cluster, for example, you'll see that it links you to the download page. And once you're on the download page, which is simply downloads MySQL 5.0 HTML, search the page for Max. It'll show up a few times, but you'll find that within the section for generic RPMs linked against the glibc that your system supports. Now, if you're running Suzy or Red Hat, simply download the generic RPM under the section where the RPM is linked against glibc version 2.2.5 or 2.25 that is and that particular package will work well. Let's look for that glib 2.2.5 and this is the section. Here it is. This is a generic RPM package which will install on any RPM enabled system or a Linux system that supports glibc 2.2.5 or higher. So we're going to download the max package, not the basic server package, because we already have this. So the max package is really an extension to the server package. Let's note that, because this also comes into play if you consider clustering. So note, MySQL max extends MySQL server package, or RPM. 
important to note because it's required for clustering and for other features and it also echoes the fact that you need to have already installed MySQL dash server so it's a prerequisite before installing MySQL max that you have already installed MySQL server let's go ahead and download it. it's only 2.8 megs and we should have this momentarily on our system we'll save it to disk to the default location and then we'll navigate to the file system where we're going to install it Let's navigate into Linux CBT's home directory. And there's the package MySQL Max for 5018. Let's go ahead and execute an RPM UVH MySQL Max. This will install and you'll see that it will restart MySQL D. This is where you would have lost connections to the MySQL server, so keep that in mind prior to installation. Now Max is installed, and from our client, what we can do is go ahead and rerun Show Engines. Of course, the client complains that it lost its connection but then regained a connection of number one but notice all of the yeses now in our prior run there were primarily no's now we have yeses of course for the default including my ISM in memory and in ODB those were there but now we have support for Berkeley black hole example and pretty much everything with the exception of NDB cluster or network database cluster so we want support for CSV Creating table structures based on the CSV storage engine mimics creating sta table structures for any type of storage engine, with the exception of the fact that you specify engine equals CSV versus engine equals something else, such as MyISAM, NODB, memory, and so on. So let's return to our notes and define our statement that we're going to use. Now let's suppose we want to export to a CSV file for use within a spreadsheet such as Excel the same data that we've been working with which includes first name last name and salary based on a join of course so we can go ahead and create a table and we'll take that right here and we're gonna select into it to populate it by the way so we're gonna create a table based on the following it'll contain salary etc now if you want the columns to come out nice and not having to use aliases go ahead and use quotes when defining the columns that'll save you from having to use aliases So if you know you're going to call F name first name for example go ahead and use quotes and call it first name or backticks either or ditto for last name and we've shown you this so sh this should come as no surprise that you need to escape spaces and special characters using quotes so we'll go ahead and define last name in caps followed by single quotes and salary will just uppercase it this should suffice so there are three columns first name last name and salary that we're interested in we may not even be interested in ID with respect to storing the values in a spreadsheet because spreadsheets automatically number each row so let's go ahead and remove the ID and the primary key information since it's not necessary. And we'll rely upon our insert statement and the fact that the existing employees table handles the uniqueness of the data that's defined. So we won't run into any redundant information since we're going to select from employees and populate this particular table. But instead of calling it employees underscore mem, let's call it employees underscore CSV to reflect the fact that it's an, a CSV version of the employees table which also just happened to include the salary column. So this is the table that we're going to create. Now the last piece is to change the engine type from the default or from not having specified it or from memory to CSV. We'll go ahead and create this. We'll copy it, paste it into the shell. And we'll debug any errors that pop up. Let's double check our syntax to see where this is throwing an error. And we have a create table, first name specified. Sometimes if you see an error with the way particular columns are specified, go ahead and specify that column using. Now if you experience problems creating a table structure as we've done using single quotes go ahead and use backticks so we'll switch the single quote to backtick and you'll see that this will execute nicely let's switch it for last name as well as for first name let's go ahead and try to execute this query again using engine type CSV and this time it was created successfully so backticks worked let's go ahead and execute a show tables you'll see that we now have a new table called employees underscore CSV a description of it will show us that it's exactly what we wanted 
and then we'll be able to move on. First name, last name, and salary, but of course it contains no information. When we execute a select, select star that is from employees underscore CSV, it shows blank. So we need to perform an insert by selecting columns from predefined tables. We have a previously defined insert statement. We'll just take it, insert into the new name, and we'll just retrofit it to the new table structure. So we need to insert into employees underscore CSV, and we want to insert into the column's first name. And in fact, let's just check the spelling, although it's not case sensitive. So that's first name, but we just want things to be precise. Followed by last name. And last but not least, we follow up by inserting into salary. We're going to select F name, last name, salaries, and perform the same join to get the information in. Let's go ahead and perform this particular insert. And if all goes well, we'll have four records momentarily. Notice four were affected, four rows that is, four records were inserted. Let's rerun the select star from employees underscore CSV and you see that we now have four users or four employees placed into the employees underscore CSV table. Now how is this all represented on the file system? That's the important thing. We know that it's a CSV based table. A describe or a show create table for employees underscore CSV will confirm that this particular table has been created using the CSV engine. And by the way, you can use alter table to switch from one type of engine to another, such as from CSV to my ISAM or to some other engine. So keep that in mind as well. So the structure is here, and it's available for HR usage or for whomever within the organization needs to see this sensitive information. On the file system, we'll find the files that are of interest. Let's navigate into var live MySQL HR and you'll find that we now have a new file called employees underscore CSV dot CSV. A file against this particular file will reveal that it is indeed a CSV ASCII text file. We can cat its contents all while the server is connected. Let's go ahead and paste it. Keep in mind this is a file that's open by the server and it's being written to. Let's insert a new value for example since we've already selected and there are no constraints let's just go ahead and insert the same data twice we'll paste it into the first window and you'll see we've inserted another four rows let's rerun a select star and now we have eight rows albeit redundant information but on the file system it's reflected immediately there are the eight records which can be inserted into any CSV aware application. We can execute a line count against the file using WC against employees underscore CSV dot CSV and you'll see that it contains eight lines. So how do we go about opening the file? Well first we'll need permissions to the file. As you can see MySQL the user and group can read write the file. So you'll want to copy this file to somewhere and execute or at least assign the right permissions to the file for someone to be able to open it. We're currently logged in as a user who does not have privileges to open the file. So let's go ahead and copy employees underscore CSV dot CSV into Linux CBT's home directory. It's copied it. Then we'll change directory into Linux CBT's home directory and we'll LSL star dot CSV. You'll see that the permissions still aren't set. So let's go ahead and change mod and we'll set it to 644 employees underscore CSV dot CSV. Now the standard user can interact with the file but not make changes to the file. If we want to enable a user to change the file then we'll need to change ownership on the file using chown for example. So let's chown Linux CBT employees underscore CSV dot CSV and then you'll see that the user Linux CBT owns a file which means I can simply launch a program that's aware such as calc. So let's go ahead and find our calc program, the spreadsheet program, and we'll attempt to import this file. Of course it will work. It's pretty straightforward, but we just want to illustrate that it is possible. And ditto if we were to use another application such as Excel. 
let's go ahead and we'll attempt to open it or even to import it either or will work but notice in the all files section let's scroll down text files are supported and we'll just pick text we're scrolling through so many different options here that are supported. In fact, let's just specify the name. The options are too many to list. So we'll navigate into our home directory and there's the file, employee CSV. All we then need to do is specify how the columns are set up and then we'd be able to import it. But at least it reads it and by default it's stuffing it into one particular column because it thinks it's tab separated. So let's go ahead and say it's separated using comma and notice it breaks the information out into three fields rather than to two fields and the headers can be modified. The column type is specified. You can tell it to be text. This is text. And for last name, let's go with text. And for the salary, it's actually money. So we'll specify US English. And we could label the, car the column headers as well. Let's click on OK and we'll have the data in momentarily. There's the data. So straight out of a live running MySQL server, we're able to import the CSV data. And again, this works fine as well on a Microsoft Excel based system. So using the CSV engine is pretty useful. And it comes in handy in the event that you analyze data using programs such as spreadsheets that make use of CSV type data. It's very easy to implement, but just realize that you do need to install the MySQL Max package if you've installed or implemented MySQL using the RPM packages.